Welcome everyone in this podcast, new episode of Let's Talk AI. Today I'm with Gus Reyes. Gus, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm, I'm great today. Um, I'm a little bit excited about kicking off the 2023, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm still off work, but I'm going to work on a couple of things later on because I need to have everything ready for starting my week tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah, all good. Very excited. Um, about a lot of projects that I want to develop this year. Well, I'm excited yeah. to hear more about it. And um, so just to start uh, this podcast, this podcast, I think that we define the scope uh, more in the business analyst, data analyst roles. So if you're a data scientist, data engineer, this episode will be very interesting to understand better this role, but we won't go further into machine learning models, putting in productions. We will focus different axes such as data visualization, agile management, and a lot yeah. of great topics uh, regarding these two jobs. But um, first of all, Gus, could you maybe define who you are in a few sentences for the people that are listening? Okay, so let's say um, I consider myself a very outgoing person. Mm -hmm. I like to talk with people. I like to explore new cultures. I like to learn all the time. I like to uh, interact with individuals. Uh, that's why I have a role in teaching, let's say. Mm. I like to help people. It's a part of my nature. Uh, I'm a foodie person, let's say, because that's a part of the traveling experience and exploring new cultures. You, you best way to try uh, what they do is but what is to try what they eat, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm a foodie person. Um, I consider myself an achiever rather than a doer, right? Okay. Um, uh, and I would say that uh, one of the key uh, skills that I have learned so far is uh, you need to be proactive and you need to learn from others as well. Because as individuals, uh, let's say, for example, um, any sport, except tennis, um, even though when you played in duo, mm. or, uh, most of the sports you played as a team, mm. right? So you need from others because you're not the best, right? So mm. you need to learn from others and you need to be a part of something else, right? Um, yeah. Um, and I will say when I'm, as I said, um, I consider myself an achiever rather than a doer. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to achieve is um, uh, I'm seeing myself like uh, helping a lot of the new generation of uh, data professional and business analytics professional. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it in my organization digital analytics. So our aim is to uh, support the journey uh, of these new professionals, especially uh, this time of, let's say, in 2023, where all of these digital analytics roles are growing and growing and growing, where more companies uh, are experiencing their digital transformation. Yes. Digital transformation means uh, you need more people qualified in analytical roles, so it's a great opportunity and it, give, it gives you a lot of satisfaction to know that uh, you can help and enable mm -hmm. potential future leaders uh, to uh, start the journey and their career in this world of data and business analytics, which, as you know, uh, the next steps is going to be machine learning and artificial intelligence. Right? Yes. Right? So yes. That's one of the things. Okay, yeah. awesome. And if I understand correctly, so right now you're f uh, full time teaching business analyst and data analyst, correct? Yes. Maybe can you can you give us a little bit of uh, retrospective on what you've done so far? How you how you how you grow how you growing in your career? What have you been doing to like come to this point where uh, you? you really enhance your knowledge and what you've learned for people to achieve their dream jobs and, and get into the market and like give them a, a great plan to, to go into the market and, and understand like uh, the proper way of, of doing things and gaining experience, which we will talk about uh, a bit uh, later on the episode. But can you give us maybe the retrospect what happened so far? Okay, so let, let me tell you. Um... Um, I've experienced more than 12 years uh, with O2. And as you know, O2 at some point used to be the biggest telecom in, uh, company in the whole world. So the uh, telecoms 
uh, let's say mobile communications are one of the industries where you can be aligned with the development of technologies. Mm -hmm. So I'll learn, uh, let's say, multiple uh, skills, uh, and I was challenged, uh, uh, let's say, and I'm heavily involved with big projects with this organization, um, and I learned from great leaders. So uh, that experience that I gained in multiple departments and multiple uh, stages of this organization during the uh, evolution that they have, like mm -hmm. let's say, I remember I started with them when we were in 2G communication, uh, band, then 3G, then 4G, and not speeding, I didn't speed in 5G. I mean, I only experienced as a user, but not as a part of the development, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was a great thing, you know? So the experience I learned, uh, in terms of like soft skills and hard skills uh, enable me to uh, understand more about other industries. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and I remember um, when I moved to the UK, because uh, I'm originally from Latin America, a tiny country called Nicaragua, I explored multiple opportunities. Uh, and one of them was, uh, uh, I said, that uh, was this. Uh, they were looking at tutor trainers. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And some of the companies uh, were looking for professional experience. Mm -hmm. And they said, like, uh, we will qualify you as a trainer within the first years of your employment. So I said, this is a good challenge. And as I said to you, I'm an achiever rather than a doer. And I like challenges. Mm -hmm. So I started to target these uh, uh, companies. And I started to look at what the requirements were for these uh specific roles and uh, so um let's say i find this opportunity i started to find my way i started to analyze the gaps of what, what i need uh, to achieve what they needed and uh, so i started to upskill myself and then um, i ended up in this industry i've been with them so far uh, let's say with this company two years more or less and previously i spent a year with another company similar to that we were on the, the scheme of apprenticeship industry, as they call in the UK. The apprenticeship industry here is a, is a way that, let's say, younger generation can use to get a qualification, learn, let's say, uh, and practice, I mean, learn in the making, because this is about, you go to a role as an intern, right, with a company, you work in a, with, in a, a, a in a working environment with multiple professionals and you learn from them, you are assigned to a mentor and there is a manager looking after your development as well. Mm -hmm. um, we develop on the specific syllables uh, <clears throat> developed by um, the British uh, Computer Science uh, um, Awarding Body under the industry of the apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Apprenticeship, in this case, for business analysts and data analysts, they need 18 months in the program till they get the qualification. So they learn, as I said, lots of uh, technical skills and soft skills, uh, specifically uh, collaboration, efficiency, time management, uh, interpersonal relationship. Um, the more they advance into the programs, the more they learn about how the role relates to the entire department and then how the department works as a part of the business you know it's a whole entire process and then they can analyze uh, let's say when opportunities are given they can analyze external factors that mm -hmm. may influence the operation of the organization or the industry mm -hmm. like legal or factors or something like that right uh, they can apply some external analysis for that mm -hmm. this is when that tricky question comes into place like uh, a business analyst or data analyst. Exactly. Uh, this is this is this is something I, I wanted to to get uh, to get uh, back to you. Um, so we've understood more more your background and what you're doing and this um, this method that you have for business analyst. And analyst. But yeah. what is the difference between a business analyst and a data analyst? Let's, let's say it. Uh, I would like to say it first, uh, based on my spirit. Some companies sometimes are quite cheeky mm -hmm. and they because they overlap between each other, mm -hmm. sometimes companies extract some of the key roles, I mean, or key responsibilities mm -hmm. of both and yeah. mix them together mm -hmm. and they advertise the role. 
So I remember at some point in my career, I was somehow business analyst in terms of like a being involved in projects. But at the same time, I was a data analyst because I was analyzing the data generated by the project or the process in, in let's say, the, in question, right? So um, let's say, as you know, data analytics involve analyzing data sets to uncover trends and insights that are subsequently used to support the decision-making process, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the business analysts, they look and focus on various types of information mm. to make practical data-driven business decisions and implementing changes based on those decisions. So mm. they look after like, um, let's say, what happened when you provide insights as data analysts? You, I mean, sometimes I like to use the, and I, I resonate with Brent Dykes. He's a guy, uh, fantastic in terms of data storytelling. Mm -hmm. He said like, where your data product finish? Uh, does it finish when you give it to someone else as a data producer? Or does it finish if you chase it and look what happened with those insights that you provide? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you going to let them die? So, and it, or let's say, ideally, it would be fantastic if you chase those, the, the, let's say, the end of that insight. Mm. If that insight becomes a project, if that insight becomes a chain. So the difference there will be business analysts use data for some strategic business decision and the data analysts gather it. That's how it is defined. It. But nowadays in reality, lots of professionals are encouraging data analytic people to say like, look, you need to chase your insights. You need to see where it's going to end. And this is when a combination of both must happen because let's say in the past, I remember the data analytics, uh, the data analytic people were some kind of like robots. Mm -hmm. They didn't interact with people. They were just doing the job, producing dashboard reports and some of that. Mm -hmm. And it was someone looking at the results of those uh, those analysis and reports. And that was the person talking to the main stakeholders mm -hmm. to make decisions. But nowadays, uh, uh, let's say nowadays, uh, for example, this program involved that the data analytic people need to interact with stakeholders. And this is where I would say the agile approach can support data mm. uh, because uh, from an agile perspective, you need to understand the needs, you need mm. to understand the problem, yeah. you need to understand the processes, you need to understand the stakeholders, mm. uh, how to implement change. Mm. Uh, is it going to be functional? Is it going to be non-functional, general, etc. Mm -hmm. right? so, so this is this is a topic I really want to, to ask you about, uh, Agile Method and, and Management. I wanted to get back on what you said regarding the data analyst and business analyst. I feel like yeah. nowadays, those kind of jobs, uh, as you mentioned, are getting crossed. Like a data analyst should do some business analyst things and it yeah. works in the other way. And this is very similar to a data science engineer in my point of view. Because yeah, if you're a data happens. scientist and so a data scientist, I would say it's like a data analyst, but he builds more because he will develop models and he will develop, um, he will develop, I don't know, he will do like deep learning. It really depends on the data, but uh, he will do more coding and build more things maybe. But uh, in the end, uh, it is very related and the data scientist to be great uh, from my perspective and what I've heard so far. We really need to understand what the data engineer does. And, and a lot of the times in, in, in my experience, um, everything is linked and a data scientist needs to, to, to be able to do data engineering things and, and in the other way um, also. So I feel like we're more, the more we advance, the more of those roles, uh, where, when we want to be great, uh, we need to have a boss, uh, both sides of the, of the, of the two jobs. So yeah. uh, I found, yes. It's funny because um, I remember reading uh, last year in one of the LinkedIn posts, uh, the data community, mm -hmm. and um, this year they will create some kind of like a new role. Mm -hmm. I mean, but this will only be seen in big corporations. And the big role is going to be called business scientist. Mm -hmm. which, and it's a combination of a business analyst well, let's say, I don't know, a Scrum Master or a DSDM uh, expert or whatever, 
uh, or a project manager, let's mm. say, uh, with Agile, uh, with a data scientist, mm. right? And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that sounds like another cheaper way of, let's say, demanding more uh, skills combined mm-hmm. in the person. But let's say, talking about what you say, I resonate with um, J, uh, John K. Thompson. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have heard of him, right? Yes. Uh, it's an amazing uh, data leader. Uh, uh, he's in artificial intelligence and commercial intelligence and so on. You know, I I I really um, uh, admire all his job and all of that. And I resonate with one of his models. Right? He said that the data science in general is divided into two: the data artisans and the data factory. Mm. And this. And you said that, um, for example, the data scientists should know what the data engineers are doing. Mm-hmm. So in that model, if you look at any data architecture, let's say, right? Mm-hmm. You go on one side, uh, the data collection methods, you look the if they have a data warehouse, if, the, if they have like the, the first layer of integration, the ETL process and so on and all the things like, then the security, the governance, the data mass and so on till it gets to the users. I used to be at some point, a data consumer. Uh, I was. Um, I ended up my career as a data visualization expert. Mm-hmm. I was providing in, insights to stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say um, at some point when I was getting into that point, yes. I said I, I always wanted to know what's going on where this report is generated. Yeah. So I used to go to IT where all the data engineers were, mm-hmm. and I used to say like, excuse me. Um, would you mind if I ask you uh, what's going on? I mean, do you, how do you, uh, for example, refine this information? How this information ended up coming clean to me? Mm-hmm. And when I used to do some transformation, I used to go to uh, to them and say, like, excuse me, can you add this? Can you add that? So then I started to realize that it was beneficial for me to learn SQL. Mm. And then I learned SQL to have, and then I, I asked access to the main source of our data. Mm-hmm. And I was able to retrieve the data without them providing me mm-hmm. whatever they used to uh, provide. And it was it was amazing. Um, um, learning what was happening in the factory, but being the artisan at the same time. Yes. So my role was mainly to be the artisan, but I was aware of what was happening in the transformation and whatever, mm. uh, of the, the whole process to for that data to be available for me. And it's exactly the same with the business analyst now. The business analysts, at some point, they need to look at data modeling. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be data modelers like data engineers, you know. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but at least they need, they need to understand the basic. For yeah. example, like, um, let's say, why do we need data normalization? Why do we need mm-hmm. to have multiple tables and data defined to mm-hmm. be uh, defined by the company in the data dictionary? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, um, and that's one of the... Uh, key um, specific modules when I'm when I'm teaching business analysts where all my students struggle with business analysts mm-hmm. they struggle with data modeling and I can tell you um, they have been great but they need to uh, first uh, let's say um, when they try to uh, find out in that way because my role uh, I don't get involved with the company let's mm-hmm. say. I mm-hmm. just talk with the manager uh, and I, I, obviously, for some kind of like uh, GDPR uh, reasons, I cannot see the system or something like that. I just yeah. need to see whatever they're providing as evidence because they create a portfolio. It's aligned to the standard. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you, um, when they get to this data uh, modeling section, oof, uh, they get completely lost. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's some kind of like a hard thing to do, you know, mm. especially when you've never seen it. Mm. Uh, but then, um, let's say, I like to use this um, Adventure Words database. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a common database. Uh, it's pretty easy to explain. Um, and you, you have the chance to uh, um, show them, for example, uh, the levels of cardinality, the let's say the foray keys, the, the mm. primary keys, mm-hmm. the relationship between tables, and why do you need to have it like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, why do you need a product rather than a customer first? Because I mean, the product has to be there, and then if you don't have customer, you cannot order the product or something, and so on. Mm-hmm. 
but it's it's like that mm. exactly it is is the scenario that happened between these two roles they complement each other and because they overlap each other uh, for, for uh, let's say on and on the other hand the data analysts need to understand how the data that he's analyzing or she's analyzing mm-hmm. uh, the it, it relates to a specific process yeah and having knowledge of both let's mm-hmm. say because business analysts you look at an entire big picture and you look at bottlenecks and all of that mm-hmm. if you have act, if you have information and you have awareness of how the process uh, has been defined to flow information you could easily identify bottlenecks and provide solution right away exactly and this from a business point of view is a uh... Is key. It is the most important thing. I think we want to be great at these roles. We always think of the hard skills, but what would add more value in a business perspective and being able to have the big picture where whether it is from the ETLs, like the data engineering part where we have how all the information moves and go to the database, then how will you retrieve the information in a raw database into a specific data model? and how this data model will be efficient and how from this data retrieve and build reports and immense value and then find find new new things to explore. Uh, and, and then on top of this, when we go on roles like data scientist, machine learning engineer, being able to uh, build models, but but having this uh, 360 vision, and this is also what's the podcast, what this podcast is about. And this is why also we're talking right now about business analyst and data analyst, it is having this 360 picture of, okay, great. You can be super good at one role, but the you will have value you will add to the company is if you have this business perspective and you can understand every part so that, as you mentioned, those bottlenecks, you will maybe you will try to solve a, a problem from the data analyst perspective. But if you would just go to the, how you did before, if you just go to the IT guys, the data engineers, that, that is, doing the process and maybe you you do some tweaking on how the information comes, then you would fix 80% of your problem just by changing how it comes and arrive or if you need to do like pre, uh, pre-modification, pre normalization or whatever you need yeah, to do yeah. to the data previously. So Absolutely. I feel that that's, those are very, very, uh, very, very great advice. And uh, let us know in the comments uh, and uh, how do you feel about... Uh, about those roles, do you think that you need more soft skills, more hard skills, or in general, if you want uh, us to develop more concepts? Uh, and I wanted to ask you different things about what we just mentioned. You talk about you talk about those two roles. Um, so I will ask you about that. But first of all, well, we will also talk about for the data analysts and business analysts that are listening right now. We will give some advice, uh, advices and and how, like, for example, to sell your experiences when you're beginning. We'll share a lot of tips for beginners and more advanced people in the field. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you first about the agile method. Uh, you're pretty experienced uh, in managing and, and, and giving feedback to those people. Mm-hmm. How does the agile method comes into these roles and how do you end up managing data-driven people? Can you give us more insights on this part? Okay, so... I'll, I'll answer those two questions this way. So the agile way of working allows you allows data scientists the ability to prioritize mm. and create roadmaps okay. based on requirements and goals. Right? Mm-hmm. You need to understand uh, first what was the need of the user, mm. why do they need it for? Yes. So um, this the, the framework of becoming, let's say, as I said to my students, the best uh, analytical person is not those that. Uh, using SQL, Power BI, Excel, Tableau, and all these tools right away. Mm-hmm. Because as I said to them, you can be a robot just working in front of the computer, not knowing why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. The so concept. if you know why, what, and how, mm. uh, this, I mean, these are the main three questions. Mm-hmm. And, and these are the three evaluation points at, by, by the end of their apprenticeship. They mm-hmm. need to demonstrate the what, the why, and whom um, um, how basically mm. and the whom is like who the work who you work with like the stakeholders mm-hmm. to, to show your level of collaboration mm. so in this case um the agile framework as i said enables you to prioritize and create roadmaps based on uh, requirements and goals 
which uh, interaction with others, collab levels of collaboration, uh, you apply some requirement uh, elicitations to develop uh, or and deliver what they really want, right? So data scientists can learn something new, for example, get a refination of the results mm. by applying the requirement engineering mm -hmm. using, let's say, uh, making sure that the, the what it, what it, what they are delivering and producing has the user assessment criteria. Yeah. Let's say in this case, uh, you have these experimentations uh, platforms as, as the John used. Uh, sorry, um, Tom used to call it right. Mm. The experimentation platform is like uh, you go. Uh, and it's something that it happens uh, uh, in reality mm -hmm. you, as a data or analytical person, you work with someone, you start to work on something. Um, let's say you have a prototype, which is part of the agile framework. Mm -hmm. When you go with the prototype to the user, the user said, oh, can you add this? Can you add that? And then, and then you have, you ended up with more features and more requirements. Mm -hmm. And the prioritization is aligned to what they really need. I mean, I must have, I mean, if you apply Moscow prioritization, which is done for mm -hmm. must have, could have, should have, and won't have this time. So you need to classify all these uh, specific requirements into that specific framework. Mm -hmm. And then, as we say, um, when you're talking about managing uh, data uh, driven people, mm -hmm. uh, this is it's like a mix of uh, let's say the aim of applying and the agile framework is to be more efficient, right? Is mm -hmm. to be uh, more collaborative, to have a definition of roles, and therefore uh, increase the level of expertise in multiple roles. Mm -hmm. So managing data will help you to make more accurate decisions, as it sounds, right? So we use data to make. Uh, more informed decisions. I don't like to use the data-driven uh, thing because as many professionals, and I have learned this, uh, let's say, in the last two years, and specifically in the data, in Big Data London uh, conference, uh, lots of people were using informed rather than data-driven. Um, the situation is like um, when you inform uh, your decisions by enabling data to all your organization, let's say to people, obviously you need to define role, mm -hmm. as, as they said in, in, at the Agile framework. Uh, based on the roles, you will be uh, giving data access to these roles, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have, let's say, they are a piece of the puzzle, so they need to provide something. So embedding data to make accurate decisions increase the levels of collaboration increase uh, the level of efficiency, you become more uh, agile. Mm -hmm. thing. I mean, you know what you need to do, how your information relates to other roles mm -hmm. and how those as a whole support one of the line, one line of the business. Let's say uh, this is the situation of where uh, when I was looking at, uh, I had a discussion with one of my students here, like a few months ago, mm -hmm. about those data marks. And I said, the data marks are created to understand that you belong to a line of business. You're not going to be dealing with uh, human resource efficiency mm. if you're in sales. All you need to do is to look at revenue and how your products are being sold by if, if there's a sales force and something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, managing that. Uh, uh, it, it, that specific framework, uh, again, uh, improve the way you work, like agility, faster decision, uh, accurate information, more conscious of everyone in the mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. as a whole, because you understand the big problem. You, mm -hmm. you just not become a robot, as I said before, like you're just doing reports and that's it. No, when you have that specific uh, mindset, uh, you as a whole can resolve more problems because mm. that's your role, right? Mm. And everyone is more involved in the team and, and the final yeah. goal, and, and it gives transversality regarding uh, the analysts and the manager, or, yeah. or however the hierarchy is uh, is made. Um, okay, so that's very interesting, and um, 
And as we are mentioning this managing, uh, I want to come back on your school and how you're helping uh, the people uh, in the school, how you're teaching business analysts, data analysts. Um, can you share a little bit more about uh, to you what's the best way to learn those jobs today? Uh, can you share maybe a little bit how how your how your classes are structured and how you uh, how you, yes yeah as I said before we follow the structure provided by the apprenticeship industry mm -hmm. uh, scheme work right mm -hmm. and we follow um, uh, these uh, syllables. Mm -hmm based on the awarding body so the awarding body uh, may focus more in let's say collaboration mm -hmm. may focus more in like applying more tools understanding the combination of external and internal data for example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. using some kind of like external and internal analysis a combination of this agile framework uh, within the development of data projects right that's one thing I would say um, the first thing uh, uh, that they need to uh, understand is that I'll, I'll divide the program into three chunks. Right? Mm -hmm. The first chunk is you understand first what uh, what they do, what information they collect, how they use that information, how they've been using the information that, uh, in the last, I don't know, two, five years, ten years, right? if you have access to it, right? Then um, understand the role of everyone in your department and how your role relates to them. And based on that, then you can understand which uh, gaps are available for you mm -hmm. to create something new mm -hmm. or to improve something existing, right? Yes. Uh, which is the next part of the, the second chunk of the program. The second chunk of the program is like, now you know who use this information, how they use it, why they use it, uh, and how long have they been using it, and how, how things can change mm -hmm. based on improvement. Is It's time for you to develop something, mm. to create something. This is the time that you have to develop a project. And in the development of that project is where they need to apply, a, let's say, a statistical analysis, like time series forecasting, and let's say some basic statistic linear regression, uh, logistic regression, mm -hmm. uh, item response theory. Uh, they can apply some um, data visualization depending on the tools available. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have used Power BI, some of them has used um, Excel. Let's say Excel is going to be there all the time and it's the most common tool used in many organizations mm -hmm. um, and so on. Um, but a part of that project is like they need to show uh, which is a common thing that you need to develop as a data professional. Mm -hmm. uh, engaging with stakeholders, understanding of stakeholders, how to present that information, which leads to that question that you uh, asked me early on, how to talk with non-technical people, non-data mm -hmm. people, right? Yes, exactly. And this is why this was exactly my next question. Like, like <laughs> Maybe you can directly give to the people listening to us some insights on this part, because I feel like all the field, whether it's data scientist, data engineer, business analyst, data analyst, everyone needs to be able to adapt to explain what we do. Yeah. People. So, yes, can you give us light right. on this? Right. So, as a data analyst person, uh, if you become a robot, you will never understand how others uh, expect information mm -hmm. to be presented. So, you need to understand them. So you need to interact with them first. Yes. You need to analyze them first. So you need to understand what they need to listen, what they need to listen, basically, yeah. right? Um, that's something that I highly recommend you to uh, uh, to the audience to purchase a book called, um, let's say, it's Gilbert Kellenbund, mm -hmm. and it's called. Um, just bear with me a second, and I'll tell you the name. Um, Gilbert Kellenbund. Um, yeah, I'll tell you the name. Uh, it's called um, People's Skills for Analytical Thinkers. Sorry, um, I have read so many books <laughs> that I didn't have the name at, at the top of my head, basically. Right, um, I will say uh, the first thing is that 
uh, you need to understand your audience. You need to understand mm-hmm. your people. Yes. Uh, you need to understand what kind of uh, the levels of technical words they they will be using, mm-hmm. uh, right? Um, and I'll say um, another thing about be aware um, is that based on the previous assessment, yes. you need to consider that some of them will find you boring if you start using lots of technical words. So don't be a data snob. Be uh, aware that you better use colloquial words and common words that they will understand. So for example, if your audience is related to sales, you uh, you will expect them to ask you questions related to sales about like the most sold product, the more if it, the, the the opinion of the customers, a specific region, why this product is not being sold in that specific region, are we promoting the, the, the product or the service better, what do we need, do we need more training? So you need to focus on how your data analysis product will provide value mm-hmm and support their decision making. Mm-hmm. So is the outcome aligned to what they really care about? You need to uh, focus on uh, that specific point. You need to uh, make sure that uh, your uh, your insights are uh, converted into actionable insights. Are your insights going to motivate them to uh, go and implement something new? Mm-hmm. Are your insights are going to give them some kind of guidance mm-hmm. or some kind of hints where to start? And this is, again, where I was saying before, mm-hmm. uh, if you apply the Agile methodologies or you or overlap some kind of like key specific responsibility, if you understand as a data analyst the process of this, where this data comes from and how this data flow through many departments, you will be able to... Uh, provide a deep insight in terms of like converted into an actionable insight, right? So you need to uh, give them, uh, let's say, some kind of hints of where to start with the next steps. Yeah. And um, if you become a part of the development, it would be a, a absolutely fantastic, let's say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And I think that's super insightful. And this is something way too much overlooked in this industry. Uh, I mean, from my perspective, uh, maybe you're listening and you're like, uh, well, yeah, I totally yeah. do this and that's awesome. But I think that in data teams, we always forget that we need to ask ourselves, why is this person asking me? Like, what does this person need? Because this person yeah. is not technical. So the why of the person, what this person wants from you. And once you have this, I think it is whether whether you're solving business problems or whether you're a sale, like when you want to sell technical solutions, you need to be exactly. able to explain to the person in front of you. If if you're going to sell a complex project uh, that will do one thing to a very technical person, then yes, you need to be very, uh, very good at explaining uh, what it does and using technical terms because the the peop- the person in front of you will expect that from you, but if you if, if you have a, a way more business person that have no idea of technical, if you go with big technical terms, then you will just you will just sound as you say as you said before you will just sound like uh, they will dislike you because a data snob exactly yeah um and again it's like um the 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 main points in your presentation will be you show them the, the on now mm-hmm. what's wrong yeah. what's the problem mm-hmm. and what benefits they will get if they don't change i mean sorry what benefits they will get if they change mm-hmm. if they follow what you're trying to yeah. tell them yeah you know what i mean yeah totally uh, we, we need to all the time change the framework and the perspective of okay what yeah. we're looking okay from a technical point of view this is how i would do it but then want and what does this person want and and why people are asking me what they're asking me to be able to deliver uh, in the best way possible uh, what is expected uh, and how to add value because this is uh, being able to like change this perspective I think is one of the, the great tools to to grow a great career around these jobs because you can really add value and as you mentioned before you're you're um, you're someone that goes for challenges and you're not just like someone that is going to do the task but 
do it better and why we're doing this and how to do yeah. it and and how to save money and in the yeah. end this is what we need uh, in, in this field and those are the profile profiles that add the most value yeah and also uh, another thing is like you need to when you get to your comfort zone you need to get out of it mm. right otherwise you you become obsolete mm -hmm. you, you're not productive mm. And also you need to, again, is the curiosity, mm. which is a part of the, is one of the key an analytical person. You need to have high levels of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would never develop anything mm. for them. Yeah, right. totally. Before we, and yes, sorry. Yeah, um, I was going to say, uh, um, one of the things is like, because um, uh, I remember, um, uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to discuss is like how you showcase your strengths when you don't have it. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So one of the more important steps steps in in this specific part mm -hmm. is like you need to make a self assessment, mm -hmm. identify skills, you, how you uh, in which fields or in which specific uh, uh, parts of the the business you can be uh, a part of their quality assets let's say mm. so um let's say for people trying to get into data roles or business analyst role mm -hmm. you need to analyze yourself first and identify the gaps of those things that you don't have mm. and those things that uh, let's say the skills that you don't have there are multiple ways to uh, improve them um, to get them you can easily uh, go um, learn something online. There are some webinars all the time on mm. LinkedIn or any other platform. You can look at, you can listen to podcasts uh, on all the platforms: Spotify, Google, mm -hmm. Google Cast, and whatever. Um, YouTube is a great mm. resource of information and, uh, and free. Uh, one sorry, I'm sorry. One question that really comes uh, comes into mind right right now when you're describing this is. Let's say I'm very new to data data um, data analyst or, or business analyst role, and I want to showcase my experience in an interview. But I don't have really experience except that I have watched a few videos on YouTube and I have one or two class on Udemy. Uh, like, how do you do when, when you have direct experience to sell yourself after, for example, that you've analyzed yourself and like you kind of know well who who you are and what you do? But how do you build up experience towards interviews when you don't really have experience? Okay, so the first thing is um, uh, you can identify uh, immediately, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't. And you can sometimes um, they will find honesty mm -hmm. is a great quality, mm -hmm. right? So you have to be honest and you can say, I don't have these specific skills. However, I've been enrolled into a specific uh, course when I'm going to be learning more about the theory. And then I have... Uh, um, enroll myself into a boot camp or let's say a challenge on LinkedIn related to this and that will enable me to collaborate with others to learn from others with experience and I will be having access to a mentor right? mm -hmm. who's going to be signposting me how to develop more this specific skill mm -hmm. so for example I remember at some point uh, when I try uh, let's say my, in my career I work in logistic mm -hmm. with O2 Logistic and finance. I started as an apprentice, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to get into the industry and to know more about the specific company you want to go in, mm -hmm. unless you have the experience. If you have the experience, you can apply for the role right away. But the best way is to gain that experience that you don't have is to enjoy en enroll to um, an internship or an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. right? um, let's say when you go into um, um, an apprentice, uh, an apprenticeship, or into an internship, uh, you will be learning from everyone, you because your curiosity will take you to understand why this person is doing this, why my manager is doing that, why my mentor is doing this, uh, why we need to send this information to another department, and you will see the way they communicate, the way they make things agile, mm -hmm. let's say, and. Um, so you need to uh, focus more on uh, quality yes. rather than quantity, mm -hmm. right? You need to think about again the strengths that the role, the, your role model sh should have, mm -hmm. and based on those strengths that they should have, 
you need to assess. At the moment, I only have, let's say, 7 out of 10. Mm. So I'm only 3 mm. uh, down. So I need to go and get uh, some kind of like learning and experience mm -hmm. using these specific strengths and skills. Uh, a way to, um, let's say, to assess yourself is like you can test yourself online for free. Mm. There are multiple universities and you just go and say, like, for example, you want to test your um, project management skills. There you go and look for the assessment and you can get, a, let's say, um, a badge from LinkedIn. Mm. That's um, right away. Um, a qualification that you can get, right? Uh, and you can showcase in your profile on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And let's say that nowadays things happen more on LinkedIn and in these specific social media platforms. LinkedIn is, uh, I had to say, is the best platform in terms of like communicating with more professionals. Mm -hmm. And let's please uh, keep, keep that in mind that it's not Facebook, it's not Instagram, right? Very professional there. Mm -hmm. um, you need to as well uh, look at, for example, all those specific descriptions point in the job role related to you. How, uh, because companies are willing to take people hungry. I mean, with that hunger of becoming mm -hmm. a part of their business. Yeah. And they say, look, I don't have this, but I'm willing to do this, that, and that, and that. And specifically, Sometimes uh, companies prefer to have someone from from zero mm -hmm. develop it and tailor it as a part of them mm. because they will understand and be loyal to their culture, the ethos, um, uh, the, uh, the, the the values that they have in place. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's one of the thing. Um, as another thing is like you share your achievements. So in that case, if you share your achievement and your impact in the past, you will show right away that you're an achiever mm. and you will think in an ambitional way, mm. let's say. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, that, that I would say... No, that's super insightful. Uh, let us know uh, if, if those uh, tips le um, helped you and, and how, you, how you are able to implement them. I know that companies like Amazon... Uh, that are very top for data driven people that will expect mm -hmm. you to use uh, the star model, uh, which is uh, mm -hmm. start with uh, the situation, then the yeah, process, yeah, yeah. then the action, and then the result. And yeah. they will emphasize on the numbers in the story, like what impact it had, like just to make sure that you are, that because you're in the data field, so you need to be able to know KPIs of what your vo what your work uh, added uh, and even if you you are not exactly sure you need to figure out some numbers to be able to 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 build your your story and and that the story is data driven i'm not saying numbers but maybe it can be an approximation but like this mindset of data driven is very is very important and some things i wanted to add regarding uh, the, the tips that you gave is uh keep applying because Applying and doing selection process give a lot of insights of what this role needs. So by doing more interviews, you're able to uh, achieve a lot of um, uh, achieve a lot of knowledge and build a lot of knowledge in terms of what you need to learn. Uh, if you're if you're still, uh, for example, technical perspective, if you're still a bit light, then you know how to focus yeah. yourself. And this is by doing a lot of interviews. So don't be afraid of failing interviews. This is a great, uh, exactly. this is a great uh, way to learn. It, and, and again, another thing is, uh, as I said before, internships are, and apprenticeships are a good uh, way to learn mm. something that you, you don't have. Uh, you can apply for entry-level roles, mm -hmm. even though you're non-qualified or overqualified to understand uh, for example here in the UK uh, companies provide you feedback you're entitled as a candidate to a, a company mm. if, if you don't get the job because that will enable you to understand what things you need to get a job mm. similar to that uh, joining a boot camp again uh, it will enable you to interact with others uh, with people with multiple uh, uh, and different experience compared to you and uh, looking for free courses linkedin all the time and uh, lots of people are sharing yeah. 
because the, pff, even, I, I remember there is a guy from El Salvador, Daniel Saldana, that's his name. Mm. He's constantly, every single Friday, he shared links of free courses. Uh, you need to join a data community. There are multiple data communities on Slack Tom, and on LinkedIn. There Tom are data Eve, groups. Tom, Eve have a very great uh, data community. Yeah, well, uh, my life changes since I met his. Uh, I met him and he endorsed me to his community. Mm. I um I have a um, wider approach of le understanding things mm -hmm. uh, that I was lacking of, let's say. Uh, looking at a mentor, now that we're talking about Tom, mm -hmm. uh, Tom uh, endorsed me to uh, this community where he used to be our mentor. But then once you reach a level that you don't need a mentor uh, anymore, you can be a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Um, at some point, I was requested to be a mentor of two guys, uh, one in um, Colombia mm -hmm. uh, and another person in Madrid. Uh, but that up now, so he doesn't need a mentor. He said, like, I'm extremely busy, but sometimes I need a chat. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you can work on your spare time or uh, build a portfolio. That's a way to showcase your skills. Mm -hmm. And you can build your portfolio uh, using common data sets as, such as the Adventure World, the Airbnb case, Netflix. Um, I think there is something about Amazon uh, in terms of rating. Right? Uh, I will say that's a good way to showcase yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. you can find data sets on Kaggle, uh, K-A-G-G-L-E, yeah. and there are many ways to, to find data sets. But... Um, Yeah, awesome. Also, feel feel free to reach out on LinkedIn to Gus, to me, or to anyone there, yeah. and just ask if they have some time to to talk with you when you connect to them. I don't know, and you, and we will do an episode on Gus uh, on, a, on a Gus course of uh, how like how to move yourself and sell yourself and contact people to like get mentors and basically it's just reaching out to people and asking about what they do, why do they do it. Yeah and uh, how do they see themselves growing and just by asking those questions to a lot of people we end up learning so much about how it works and yeah. what are the things we are talking about um so those are great ways and you can also um, uh, learn more about Gus. Gus, uh i have three three questions for this episode uh, so is that good with you uh first of all how do you keep improving uh, through your career and how do you improve today okay um I call it, um, to improve my career, um, to keep myself improving, mm -hmm. I call it my triangle of knowledge. Okay. Right. First, you, you, need to, uh, you need to learn what the industry is demanding, mm -hmm. right? Because in, in analytics, it's a never, never stop industry. You need to learn constantly. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn what is on the industry. So you can learn from free courses, you can learn from paid courses, etc. Another way is to learn from the community. Mm. You need to go and check what the community is sharing and you learn from them or a mentor if you have a mentor. And the other way of learning is helping others as well, mm -hmm. right? Because remember, this is some kind of like um, the, the, the community is divided into, uh, analyze it in a way that companies classify the roles, junior, Uh, meet, meet specialists or senior so, um, a level below you and there will be people above you so you learn from the people above and from the people below so when you share and learn the learning experience become greater mm -hmm. and obviously practice if you don't practice you stay uh, behind the, the, the tracks let's say that's the way uh, I would say that I keep myself uh, up to date mm -hmm. Um, learn from others uh, as usual. Mm. I mean, don't be afraid to ask. For uh, are willing to there, uh, are waiting there to hear from someone like you mm -hmm. uh, with questions because they would like to learn as well. Yeah. Why, why you need to ask that question, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a good refresh for them <laughs> yes. when you ask questions. Yes. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And being able to uh, paraphrase what you've learned uh, also. It, it, it enhances if you understand correctly the concepts. And, and in a lot of the episodes, in the episode with Tom Eve, uh, in, like every that are very good in the field, they talk about the concepts and how you need to understand the concepts before everything because yeah, yeah. this is the most uh, important it, thing. So 
So yeah, great. This is I'll great. use um the the analogy of how you get a driving license here in the UK. Mm -hmm. You first need to pass the theory and then go for the practice. Mm. So it's exactly the same in data science and business analytics. You need to learn the concepts. Yeah, this doesn't need it like to be like learn it from directly the book, but like take, as you mentioned before, take an adventure work and load the project and load in, in the tool and follow the theory while you're doing it. And this is for me how I've learned so much. Like, like if you want to learn Kafka, cool. Kafka is just, like, it allows you to stream process, uh, stream data live uh, in real time. So that's great. And, yeah. and you can build your pipeline and everything, but, but like to understand it correctly, read about it, adventure work example and just move that I with Kafka and once you've done those things I feel to me at least the concepts stay way better in my head um, yeah so a second question is how can people connect with you and where can they reach out and what do you have there uh, online your courses uh, like a little bit more about you and how they can reach out and learn more okay about what so you do. they can find me on LinkedIn mm -hmm. as Gos Reyes I spell it G U S and then R E Y E S. Mm -hmm. um, on my LinkedIn, I share uh, content related to business analytics, data analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I focus more in understanding the theory. Sometimes I share a lot of data visualization because that's my strength. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I find something interesting, something new, I share it there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I share as well some reviews of books because I read books as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll say, um, yeah, yeah, feel free to contact me. Uh, reply. Uh, I'm there. Um, yeah, mm. yeah, I'm there on LinkedIn. Mm. Uh, and you have I'm, your. I'm gonna be sharing more contents this time. Awesome. Yeah. And you also have your course, right? Like people can can enroll to your course if yeah. they need guidance. Is it only in the UK or is it worldwide? Uh, unfortunately, it's only for UK residents okay. uh, that the specific course because this is under the apprenticeship industry mm -hmm. and scheme work, based uh, uh, funded by the government, right? So you need to be a resident mm -hmm. to apply for that course. Uh, but um, they. It's pretty easy to find the structure of that course. All you need to do is like go on Google and type data analyst level four apprentice UK and you will find the syllabus. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way. I mean, you're not going to get the qualification, unfortunately, <laughs> but you can understand the structure. Mm -hmm. um, and you can develop it with any of the data sets that they uh, have available online. Right. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Right. To the last question of the episode, I want you uh, to thank you so much, Gus, for all the sharing, sharing this knowledge. I, I really enjoy how the people in the field take the time to to share to to share their knowledge, their experiences, and I really feel that it enhances how we can grow all together. Um, so thanks a lot for that, uh, and also I'm looking forward to maybe do another episode sometimes uh, or, or um, in another um, format about data visualization because this is your, ex your expertise and I feel like to hear more about that too. But uh, maybe in the future... Uh, I have something uh, there because uh, I've been working with the Adventure Words database mm -hmm. and I've been developing three of the most common projects. Uh, one is product analysis, the other one is HR performance, which... Um, you can get a lot of hints mm. of what things uh, to use. Mm -hmm. For example, inferential statistics, mm -hmm. uh, based on the questions that you... Um, there is sometimes series analysis, there is um, forecasting there. You can look at, uh, let's say, thresholds mm -hmm. about identifying sickness, uh, the main products being sold in a specific region, and so on. Mm. And... I can talk about colors, how to use the colors in data visualizations. The secret of that, I'll give you a hint now. Uh, um, if I would like to share a message uh, with the community, yes. data visualization is, is not, I mean, when you're starting, my advice is like, keep it simple. Perfection those simple basics, uh, data visualization graph, mm -hmm. like line chart, bar charts, um, People hate pie charts, but sometimes you need to use them. There are other alternatives to pie charts, such as are great. But keep it simple. 
and perfection them, learn how to speak about uh, this uh, specific uh, basic charts. But when you're ready to move to something complex, uh, then do it because data visualization is unbelievable. I particularly love uh, to use maps when presenting data because mm -hmm. uh, I was heavily involved in the project uh, to collect data points. Uh, it was sponsored by Garmin. And we developed some where we collected a lot of data points uh, in terms of uh, points of reference for the whole entire nation in my home country. And I learned how to use maps inside out using GIS. Uh, that was amazing, mm. I have to say. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's not like, imagine presenting a product on a table. Well, that would be boring. Mm -hmm. But if you present it in, in a map, um, you highlight regions yes. in the Mm -hmm. yeah, that give you more awareness, mm -hmm. which is um is is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. A message is practice, learn, interact with others, share with the community, and learn from uh, um, others uh, related to your field or to your point of interest. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid of asking questions to people that you think that they may help you. You never know. Totally. Totally. Well, thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you so much for your time and sharing all this knowledge. Let us know what you thought and we see you in yeah. the next episode. Bye. Yeah, perfect. Thank you.